telltale? Is there any kind of indicator that you could tell? Don't, uh, not unless they want you to know. You're never going to know. They mm. Because um, they uh, resurrect in their own physical body that they had in their mm. in the lifetime that they resurrected in, mm-hmm. they can look just like anyone here. Yeah. And they can behave just like anybody here. Mm-hmm. And they blend in because they mm-hmm. don't really want to stand out. They want to no. influence. Mm-hmm. They have bank accounts. They work with governments. They work with yep. industry. They, they're sometimes people that rescue people on the side of the road, even mm-hmm. what we call guardian angels. Uh-huh. So, so in in the sort of the uh, movie uh, Highlander sense, uh, that he was an immortal in a program, uh, and over time accumulated great wealth because of that. So, would we tend to 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 think then that an uh, uh, an immortal is a rich person because they've been able to collect that wealth and save it from all eternity or however long they've been here? Uh, first of all, they can create anything they want from thought. So if they wanted to create a, a palace somewhere, they could simply stand on an open field and create a big palace. They can create food. They can create something uh, something from nothing. Um, there's a good book. Um, you can, If you go to my website, you can see it on the Amazon.com link, but it's called Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. And it's about a group of archaeologists that went to India to do some um, digging with some certain um, villages, areas. They were doing some archaeological digs, and they wound up having Sherpas that turned out to be immortals. And they went all over uh, in uh, parts of the Himalayas with these um, Sherpas that they didn't realize who they were at first, but they could walk through a big forest fire. They helped them walk over water. They got stranded and didn't have any food. They made a massive banquet for them. And this book tells all about these particular um archaeologists experience with these immortals Mm -hmm. they would go into villages and the people were more tribal level so they didn't know exactly they were immortals but they just knew they were healers because they would go into villages the immortals would in in parts of india and heal people yeah so um i wonder uh in india they can look any way they want to look they can have uh, some of them do have large bank accounts and have accumulated amount of money only because they don't need the money, but only because they want to use the money in mm-hmm. the world to influence things. So, yeah. yes, some of them do have bank accounts, mm-hmm. but they don't need money to, you know, sustain mm-hmm. themselves. They're beyond that. So are, they there, use it, are, so are there good immortals and bad immortals then? No. No, because good? immortality must, can only be uh, accomplished through spiritual evolution, mm-hmm. through, releasing the sep- through releasing the matrix, mm-hmm. through releasing seduction and releasing the addiction of the physical world. Mm-hmm. You're no longer seduced mm-hmm. by everything around you, mm-hmm. which most, hu- most humans are just totally seduced by everything. Mm-hmm. Um, In fact, okay. St. Germain, who was a great immortal, and he is a great immortal, St. Germain once told me that... Um, People don't even have an original thought in their mind. Yeah, he says sometimes when he would walk among humanity and, you know, he could hear their thoughts and stuff. He, yeah. You know, there aren't any original thoughts that we have. Our, our minds are just full of clutter. Mm-hmm. Where, where garbage is, in, garbage out. What, what is St. Germain doing right now? Uh, my, I have no idea. <laughs> Does he talk audibly? Does he appear to you? I don't see. Uh, I, I've only had a rare few visits by mm-hmm. him. I mean, you know, I've not been graced enough to have frequent mm-hmm. visits with him. I've mm-hmm. had a few. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Which I, I've mentioned it, a few of them in the book, okay. but um, okay. not so, all so, of them. So when you, when you see him, does he does he appear in the room with you? Does he just appear, or does he talk to your mind? No, I have had an ex- encounter, which is, is which is mentioned, um, which is mentioned, you know, in the book that I had, but where I was. Um, I was sleeping, and I felt electricity go off in the room, something that looked like electricity on my arm, just my whole body, and I woke up, and I sat up in my bed, and the whole room was kind of a bluish, glowing uh, energy, and he was standing in physical form at the foot of my bed, and so we had conversation in, at that particular time. So I've, I've had that kind of visitation with him, and I've had a couple other kind of visitations where he's physically showed up. Um, but I've had encounters with other immortals. He's he's like the big wig immortal that lots of people know about because he's actually documented in history. Yeah. And also on that Amazon page for people who are interested on my website, there's a book that's called The Comte de Saint Germain, and it's an actual historical account of this immortal. This is the one um, immortal that we have actually historical account on. He was. Uh, friends uh, with a lot of the royals mm-hmm. in of Europe in the 1700s, very yeah. good friends with the, the Sun King and Louis uh-huh. the 14th and yeah. uh, Madame Pompadour. And so many of the royals have written about him in their memoirs. Okay. Uh, we have this question here. Uh, the basic Christian belief, then, is that uh, you live on this earth 
and uh, you live the best you can, obviously, and then you go to a heavenly place that exceeds all your wildest dreams and a sort of nirvanic state. Why? And if that is there, and most obviously most Christians believe very strongly in those type of things, so why would they want to learn anything from from the things that you've learned if they know that's what they're getting it doesn't sound like it can get much better than that can it yes well that may or may not be what they're getting i mean uh, i used to tell a lot of my friends I- i'm sorry but do you think you're actually gonna go sit and have you know sit at the table with jesus uh, that's really not the case you go to a you go to an area or a heavenly level or whatever you want to call it, the purgatory level of your own belief systems and your own way that you lived your life so if you most Christians go to a place where their family is. They, they reunite with their family, and they go into these astral kingdoms that are nice kingdoms. Yes, they, they look nice, but they're very similar to the way they lived on Earth. They, they, they have their same body, their same identity. They're visiting with their relatives. They're having dinner. It's kind of very much like the life they lived here, but not all, because there are many stories of, for instance, like ghosts that were ghosts that were priests and ghosts that were Catholic priests and ghosts that were religious nuns that they found, you know, when they'd gone ghost hunting and they found these nuns and priests that were, you know, earthbound in many of these old old places in Europe. So, and many people who have traumatic events oftentimes, even if they have a Christian belief, don't always go to some place like that. They may be caught up with some other agenda and get caught with that. So... Again, yeah. the other also idea is that the astral worlds are really just thought. When you cross over, you're just going into another realm of thought, and eventually all that's going to disappear, and eventually the, the matrix mm-hmm. will disappear, and you're mm-hmm. going to disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, the only so way to live literally forever is to, first, to, to really process a resurrection and become immortal. That is the only way you're ever going to live mm-hmm. forever, because mm-hmm. if you cross over as an energy thought body, that energy thought body will eventually um, die because you can die in those realms. Wow. Well, you don't. You don't. Yes, you don't, you don't want not. that. You don't want that. Happen. Um, so, in in this realm, then, do you do everything that's described as uh, being un, what sort of maybe I don't know un, unattained, uh, not evolved? I mean, you eat, sleep, and um, other things that Earthlings do. I mean, are you doing all those things, or are you are you trying to knock to discontinue them one at a time? No, I'm not doing those things. And that, that I, I have a lot of, like, new agey people that come onto my website. I want to come to my school, and they're all, like, starving themselves. And they're saying, I quit eating because I'm this great enlightened being, and I'm not going to eat anymore. And, or they're fasting, and they're doing these bizarre rituals. And it's like, no, that is not going to get you to mm-hmm. resurrection. It's not mm-hmm. going to get you any spiritual enlightenment. Yeah. Um, the key is to not allow yourself to be seduced or addicted to the things mm-hmm. of the world. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you don't participate and keep a balanced life because yeah. you need to maintain mm-hmm. balance and mastery well, of your life. Okay. We're trying to master the world, not, you know, well, become extreme. It sounds, I don't, I don't want to bring it on a parade or anything, but it sounds a little contradictory, though, because... Y- that, that, say, when I mentioned the Christian belief, and they, they're a strong believers in an afterlife scenario... But then you sort of said they may not get it. But earlier you said you get what you believe, and if it's strong enough. I mean, can is it both, or, or, or what's going on here? It has to do with the level of spiritual evolution that you are. Remember I was talking about the seven levels? Aspirant level, of the beginning of aspirant level, most a lot of those people have no ability to remember their dreams. We're talking about crossing over after death. If you go to sleep at night and you totally are blanked out, you have no memory of where you went. It doesn't matter what your belief systems are necessarily. It's, it's what you have the ability to do. If you have the ability to remember your dreams and start controlling them and start fashioning and creating a world on the other side, then you can build that reality over there so that you mm-hmm. just step over. Yeah. It's like.